a few years ago, I went to a mini retreat in Atlanta in the US a few years ago. And there were some Swami College students there who had invited me to speak there. It was on a Saturday. It was actually Easter. So it was the Saturday after Good Friday. And I gave a talk there. I had a wonderful time. They had a lovely program that they had planned. And I gave a talk in the morning and I gave a talk in the evening. And after my talk was over, there was an African couple. I didn't know they were African. They were just an African-American couple standing and waiting to talk to me. But there were a large group of people surrounding me. And I knew they were waiting because they were waiting there for a long time. And I kept sort of moving forward, but everybody was coming there and taking pictures and so on. And finally, after almost half an hour of them waiting, and I was feeling really uncomfortable that, that I hadn't talked to them yet, I fin finally went up to them. And I said, I'm sorry, Sairam, I see that you were waiting to talk to me. It took me a while to get to you. And they started to talk to me in a language that I didn't understand. I didn't even know which language they were talking. And I said, I'm really sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. Let me call somebody, maybe someone else will know. But they continued to talk to me and they really had a baffled look on their face. And I kept saying, gesturing to them saying, I can't understand. By which time I called one of the brothers over there and said, can you talk to them? I don't know what they're saying and they're really telling me something intensely. So they spoke something and then they said, oh wait, we know somebody who knows French. Let me, so he, they were speaking in French, which I didn't even know at that time. So they came forward and then they talked to them. And they came and they said, Geeta, they are just saying that they really enjoyed your talk a lot. I said, oh, please tell them. I said, thank you. Because they were speaking in French and I couldn't understand what they were saying. But I thought that they pr probably didn't know how to speak in English, but they could understand English. A lot of us are like that. I grew up in the South. I can understand Hindi very well, but I'm not very confident in speaking the language. So I thought that may be the case. So I said, please tell them. I said, thank you. They said, no, no, they want you to talk to them. So I said, okay, I'll talk to them. Maybe you can translate for me. They said, no, they want you to talk in French. I said, I'm really sorry. I don't know how to speak in French. So then said, they said, how is that possible? She just spoke the whole one and a half hours in the morning and one and a half hours in the evening in French. <laughs> so the, then, of course, the poor brother was taken aback and said, no, the, she didn't speak in French. She spoke in English. Finally, they said, where are you from? And they said, we have just moved to the U.S. I wanted to say this is because Brother Ramesh this morning repeated the names of all the countries that he's in charge of. And it, this suddenly brought the memory of this couple to me. We are from Kong. We used to attend there. We have migrated to the U.S. And we attended one or two Sai centers, but we couldn't understand anything because we don't know English. We are still settling down. But we have felt very bad that we are not doing any of the Sai activities that we used to participate in. Not only that, we used to love the bhajans, but most of our bhajans used to be in our language. But here everything is in either Hindi or Sanskrit or English and we don't understand. So we had stopped going to the Sai center. And suddenly last week, one of our friends said, there is a program going on in Atlanta, which was about an hour for them drive. And there is a lady speaking there. Why don't you go to her talk? And these people told their friends, what's the point? We won't understand. It'll be in English. They said, so what? You know, it'll be bhajans. There'll be Swami's picture. The whole atmosphere will be filled with love for Swami. You can enjoy that because you're missing your center so much since you moved from Congo. So they had come to the program and they had sat there. And of course, they heard the bhajans and they thought, okay, maybe we'll just stay for the bhajans and leave because it's an all-day program and we won't understand anything. And then I got up to speak, they said. This was all being translated to me. And said, so this lady stood up and she spoke in French. We were so thankful to Swami because we had been missing him so much ever since we left our country. We've been wanting to hear his glory and his stories. We missed our friends. We missed his bhajans. We missed everything about him. And here was this lady. So finally, I said, you know, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm glad you understood. And I was still, you know, the minds are, play such a bad trick on us sometimes. I was thinking, these people must be really off. Because I, 
I don't know what they're talking about. I said something and they think they heard it. Well, if that's the case, so be it. Why entertain negative thoughts? And they did say that. No, they repeated my, the stories that I had said. I told them about the roses. I told them about the cutting of the grass. And they said, no, we understood everything. So finally, we all gave up trying to understand them. We said, okay, thank you very much. Goodbye. And we left. And we all came back to the host's house where I was staying, a Sai devotee. And everybody was talking about this amazing thing that had happened. And everybody was kind of laughing a little bit, a little doubtful at what had happened. No, they must have understood English. They think, you know, that because they are French, they think that you've spoken in French. So we all just discussed it for a bit and left it at that. We never thought of it as something miraculous. This happened in April during Good Friday, the Saturday after. And then in July, I went to India. And Swami graciously, with his infinite love for all the challenges still that we face in our own personal sadhana, he still keeps forgiving. He called us for an interview. And as soon as I sat down, there was another group of people along with us in the interview room. He introduced me to them and them to us. And then as uh, he sat down, he said, where have you been speaking? So I told him, I had gone to a couple of places, so I told him the names of the places that I had gone to. And he said, yes, yes, nowadays you're becoming very famous, you're talking in French also. Huh? <laughs> you're talking in French also. I looked a little shocked and he said, why? Do you think you are speaking? Every person who hears, whoever speaks, whether it is Dr. Reddy speaking, Brother Anupam speaking, whoever it may be, I am the one within them that hears and translates it to their brain so that they get the message that I want them to hear. Isn't that amazing? What a Lord. What a Lord. We are so fortunate. And then he surprised me and said, you don't know this, but it happened to a couple when you spoke in Bath. They thought you were speaking in Russian. <laughs> Swami told me, this is the Lord that I grew up with. He can play jokes, but even in the jokes, there is such a tremendous, powerful message. 